here's an interesting concept to review about the shape of the temples and the natural depression that you're supposed to have. So with fillers, everybody goes and they start filling the temples because it's kind of, I feel like something that's overlooked that you get a hollowing in the temporal area. So I've actually seen more people overfilled than appropriately filled, I think recently, but here's something that's the opposite. And this is the temporalis muscle, which inserts up over here and has a bulge on it, displaying temporalis hypertrophy. It's also, you can see bulging these veins because they have kind of restricted drainage. Naturally, the temple should have a smooth, kind of soft depression and come outwards to the cheek and then come back in to form your cheek contour. Those are the shadows that we see normally on a nice face. So you can see on this side, the strong temple temporalis muscle here makes the cheek look weak. This is after placing about 20 or 30 units of disport. What it does is this muscle that is strengthened by clenching and chewing gets weakened and now it's nice and soft and it atrophies. So you get a little bit of a depression. Now she has a narrower forehead in general without the bulge, without the veins bulging out, and then a nice smooth depression coming out to the cheek and then extending down for her cheek contour. And that's really what you want to form on most people. Obviously you want to stick in their anatomy, but here you can see that's not natural to have a crease at the temporal crest and then bulge out into a large muscle, which also makes the hairline look a little strange. Here the hairline looks more appropriate if you look at the skin going back to the hair. So as a guide for filling the temples, not to overfill you want to have a smooth gentle depression right there not severe come out to the cheek and go back in so when do you fill is when behind this orbital if there is a depression you can go deep and pop that out if this sinks in obviously too much of a concavity and then back here you always have to look at the hairline if the hairline itself is depressed in and sinking in and it makes the hairline look weak or gives you that kind of peanut head kind of shape you can pop that out as well so you do have to analyze all the way from here behind the rim going back to the hairline pretty much wherever the temporalis muscle inserts and where that fat pad is you have to look at all that and you just want to fill it gently to come out to get rid of the shadow never overfill because people look wide it's strange and they lose their cheek accent. Another interesting thing to point out when doing a facelift, this lower bulge here is where the buccal fat lies. If you see an upper bulge, that's not buccal fat, that's usually accessory parotid tissue. So if you follow along the parotid duct, which is right along this line over here, and there's a bulge there that's actually parotid tissue that's there. Parotid gland, although it's normally back here, you can have it all the way up there and it creates that. So it's a little risky to reduce, so sometimes you try to just suture it inwards to not damage any nerves there. Thank you.